Today I'm doing some spring cleaning and I'm probably covered in dust, but I wanted to talk about the cost of doing foster care. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. So probably our whole house is a mess right now as we organize and clean things. When I first started doing foster care with just Robert, who came in with me at first, he came in with just the paper bag. Like that's all the stuff he had. And in that paper bag, which was not at all filled to the brim, there were a lot of clothes that did not fit him. And there was a teddy bear that took up a lot of space. I think he had two Matchbox cars, not, not like actually Matchbox, they're little plastic like imitation ones that I was terrified were gonna break. <laughs> uh, Cause I didn't have any toys for him yet at that point. He came with very little. I'm not sure if everyone does this. I know that most of my friends in foster care do this. But when a kid's coming in, you scramble to get them a good amount of stuff so that they feel comfortable, so that you don't wash their clothes every single day, so that they have stuff to do. It's expensive. For Robert, the entire time he was with me in foster care, two years, uh, I felt like I was barely scraping by. And again, I know we've talked about this before, but sometimes people ask uh, how much you make or whatever in foster care. In our state, what they tell you in training here in Ohio is that the subsidy you get, and it's a reimbursement, so it's not upfront, the money you get is enough to cover eating conservatively at home, so not having great expensive meals, but bare bones kind of stuff, and dressing your kids from Walmart. Like shoes, everything from Walmart. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely fine. It's not what I do. Part, and part of the reason is some of the kids who come into care have never had anything but fast food. Home cooked food is foreign and weird and, and to them kind of gross. I found for the first few weeks, especially it's nice to have a little bit of, of like McDonald's because they know it and they have enough other things they're adjusting to. And I'm not saying we do all McDonald's, we don't. We mix in some home cooked food as well, but but you know, that's still expensive if you have a meal a day for a couple weeks at McDonald's, just saying. But considering they used to have three meals a day, well, if they were lucky, or maybe they only had one meal, but that was the only meal they got every day. And that was from McDonald's, you know, that's, it's a good way to help them adjust, I guess. <laughs> I'd love to hear your comments below on, on how you approach that for kids who refuse to eat anything but McDonald's when they first come into your care. The other issue, I find that for all these kids who come in, it is really expensive for the first six months. So they don't have much. You want to get them involved in sports. You want to get things going and rolling, and everything just has an upfront cost. So for six months, I take a big hit financially every time we have a kid come into care. And also we go out and we buy them a ton of clothes. We just do. We don't want to send them to school their first day wearing like the same clothes that they're going to be wearing their second, third, fourth day. And they have holes in them and they don't fit right. Not that, not the kids, the clothes have holes in them, <laughs> but they don't fit right. And so we don't want to do that. And, and I say we, cause my parents often go shopping with me or help out. Yeah. So we, we, we try to do that as much as we can. Uh, so for kids who come into care, so it's expensive. I find that Break even happens around that six month point, typically, again, depending what sports and how many sports and what some of the other needs are. But yeah, I find that around around six months, uh, like the subsidy finally actually gets to be a break even point. And for me, like we love to do activities like laser tag and video game places and trampoline parks when it's not COVID, all those things and going to the zoo and museums and like we're super active. And that has a cost. I mean, we have memberships at some of those places, but often there's a fee for that added foster kid, right? Like they're not on your membership because you have to have your names for some of these places actually on the membership. And so there's an added cost of like seven bucks or 15 bucks or whatever to bring a friend each time. So, you know, those things add up. Yeah, they really add up. Other costs of doing foster care. Well, it's unpredictable what age kid you're going to get typically, or even if if it's a little more predictable, like you say, I'm only taking 14, 15 year olds. Well, we've had like an 11 year old that was a monstrously huge dude, like big old football player guy, like huge, right? And we've had skinny 17 year olds. So you can't go and like pre-buy clothes at, you know, when they're on sale necessarily for, for kids. You've got to take the deals as they, you've got to take whatever's available. Again, that makes life a little costly. Also, you don't know all their special needs. Uh, we had a kid who couldn't couldn't use his left side very well because of his special needs, and so we went out and bought special soap dispensers, some special OT kind of or yeah OT kind of tools to help with stuff. We made some adjustments in different ways around the home just so that he could comfortably 
function without assistance as much as possible. This is not cheap. And often it takes two or three times to figure out the thing that's actually gonna work for him. Yeah, sorry, that's the washing machine in the background that's just roaring at you. Again, it costs us like 800 bucks for this private agency to get our license. With that 800 bucks, I've gotten a lot of services. So that's the financial costs. Okay, so the other cost of doing foster care that some of you could have guessed already probably is your emotional cost and your time cost, huge. So count your costs because um, it's not unusual for a kid to come into care and you think they are only gonna need one or two appointments a week or a month or a quarter and you find out that, oh no, they need like visits twice a week. They need to go to the doctor every other week for a while. They need to go to OT or PT. Like you're gonna find that there are time costs that you didn't know about. Now, all their medical stuff is covered typically, or it should be covered, if not, check into that. But if you're in the United States, all of their medication, all of their visits to the doctor, surgeries, everything, I guess not, not orthodontics, we're finding out, which is a bummer, but, but a lot of things are covered. That's not the cost. The cost is your time away from work, uh, your time to go travel to a bunch of visits and to take them to get these things done. And it's a huge cost. It is. There's three adults in my household here, me and both of my parents, we all drive. And honestly, with our last placement who had an appointment every single day of the week because of his special needs, yeah, we were told he had an appointment like once a quarter. <laughs> and it was like every every single day of the week he had an appointment. But yeah, I'm just, I was just really grateful I had my parents there to help out with that. And they're retired, so they have more time than I do. But but there's a cost to that, right? So you got to figure that out. The other is with emotional costs is, oh man, I gained 10 pounds like every time a kid leaves. Yeah, I gained 10 pounds every time a kid leaves our house because of the stress or the sadness or whatever, depending on the situation. Not always true. We've had a couple kids where that didn't happen, but generally speaking, it's true. And so, you know, this is not the girlish figure that I used to have. <laughs> um, but, and I love to eat too. So I'm, I'm definitely not blaming everything on foster kids like food. I love food, but yeah, that's how, I mean, I've got to be careful. That's not how I handle stress when kids are coming and going and for the time building up to them leaving and towards, or, you know, the time when they've actually left, I typically have gained about 10 pounds. Now I'm really good at losing some of that weight after some of it. Uh, I'd love to be losing all of it or more of it, but, but that's a cost of doing foster care. And when I look around the table at a lot of my friends who do foster care, it's not just my problem. There's a lot of us who really struggle with weight. Uh, think about it. You're losing kids and some of those kids you're very attached to. And then some kids, as you're in the process of losing them, they make your life very hard and it's 24 hours a day and it takes everything you've got just to hang on and you eat what you can when you can. And you, you know, you rely on, on junk food for energy sometimes as those kids are terrorizing you six or seven times a night, just saying, and if the kids have their issues, I'm not blaming it on the kids. I'm just saying you're going through this with them. And so that's the cost, right? That's a, There's a cost to it. And the cost for me and for a lot of people apparently is that we tend to gain some weight. You know, as far as do you make money off foster care? No, not typically I'm going to say no. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, could you, if you were really going to mistreat the kid, or no, I shouldn't say mistreat, but if you were going to nickel and dime the kid, uh, you probably could make some money off foster care, more so in some states than others. My, uh, I feel like in California, we got a little more money than we get in Ohio uh, as, as a reimbursement or as a subsidy and a reimbursement. And some of that money like, is supposed to go towards mortgage. It's supposed to go towards heating. It's supposed, supposed to go towards those costs. And, and I just think that when you add the electricity and the damage to your house, <laughs> which comes with any kid, foster kid or not, when you start adding things, Together, you're going to find that you're almost always a little bit in the negative when it comes to having foster kids. Subsidy is not going to help you out as much as you'd like it to. It does. It helps hugely. I mean, I'm not saying I don't want my subsidy. <laughs> it really does help. Like we're able, we're painting a room back here. I had some, I had a friend come and patch up the walls and stuff this week. And we're looking forward to painting it and having that all done. Cost of repairs, all the, I mean, just gosh. Yeah, I, I love, I know people are always upset that, we don't get enough subsidy, but I love that they give us something because honestly, I'd probably still do this for free if I had to. Yeah, I'd do this for free, but it would cost, it would, there'd be a definite cost. There'd be a definite cost to me for that. Yeah. So if you have questions about the finances of foster care, uh, let me know. Again, when you're going into foster care, one of the prerequisites is that you're able to cover your own expenses. So you can pay your bills, you can pay rent, you can pay for your mortgage. Whatever it is, you're able to buy groceries for yourself. You're not struggling 
to make it every month. You're not missing payments. That is a prerequisite of becoming a foster parent. They'll go through your financial records. But hey, you're not going to become rich off of being a foster parent. It's going to cost you a little probably in the long run, but really it is so worth it. Uh, If you can get to the point where you're Your desire to make an impact in kids' lives is more important than your desire to not go through some pain and discomfort. And even for maybe a little bit of your pocketbook to shrink a little bit, it's not, it's not, it's probably not going to destroy you financially. It's like I said, after a few months, it does get close to breaking even. One of the disadvantages of doing foster care that we talked about or that you brought up was what? So I have a lot of games that are raising T. So at most time now, we're not really taking teenagers. So the problem is that now it's hard, it's a pain because I don't know if I'm going to, like, I have an option to, like, wait until they're out somewhere or to play the games but play non when or hopefully, like, play later, like, at, during their bad time. So I can't play a lot of the games I like to play, like, in the day, like, I have to wait, usually. Yeah. That's not a huge issue, though, because you don't really get much media time each day, right? Two hours, that's the, a pretty nice size. But if you're willing, you know, if you can get to that point where that impact on your heart isn't as important as the fact that you're making a huge difference for these kids and for their families, if you're getting to the point where they can be reunified, then foster care is for you. Do it. You'll be trained on how to do all the stuff you need to learn how to do. You surround yourself with support groups who will continue training you in different ways and supporting you and showing up at your house when you need them, all of that stuff. There is a foster care subsidy whether you call it subsidy or reimbursement where you are, but whatever it is, you, you do get some help financially. Don't let the finances stop you from making a positive impact on the world. Thanks for watching. Let's go, Dad.